Hey, Tim. Hey, hello. Hi, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning from wherever you might be joining us. So um, we have another session again this time, and it's going to be handled by Tune, the gist, right? So let me do a brief introduction about Tune. So Tune is the digital strategist from Belgium, and um, he has been using Mautic since he started working at Drop Solid. And he loves to define, strategize, and analyze the needs of companies whilst creating a successful marketing automation strategy. So Tun is going to be talking to us today about the essential framework to your marketing automation strategies. Hi, Tun. Hi. Thank you for having me. All right. So um, you can just have your your presentation, then I will join you later when we'll be able to have the um, question and answer session. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. Yes, perfect. Um, hi, everyone. First of all, thank you for the introduction and thank you all for uh, joining this session. Um, I will start off by a brief introduction about myself. Um, as being said, um, I'm Tone. I'm a marketing automation specialist um, at DropSolid. We're a company based in Belgium, in Ghent and Hasselt. And um, we've been using Mautic for the past couple of years and we love the product and um, the ID behind it. Um, my presentation will go about the marketing automation uh, strategy framework that we've created. But uh, and something important for me is the why. Why did we feel the need to create a marketing automation strategy framework? Uh, what are the benefits from it or why, why is it necessary? So um, let's get into it, the why. Um, We've been using Mautic for a while now, and we've um, used it with different clients so far and started implementing it with different clients. And there were some things that were noticeable uh, to us. First of all, um, people who were new to marketing automation and to Mautic in general, they didn't really have a strategy behind campaigns. For example, they were just um, normal web campaigns without real data tracking behind it or real um, strategy. Uh, secondly, there was no real structured way of working for uh, many of our clients. They didn't find, uh, when they started setting up Mautic, they needed a lot of guidance and there wasn't a clear flow uh, and this framework helps with it. And um, lastly, but uh, I think one of the most important parts, um, a lot of people were forgetting important parts of a campaign. This can be related to different assets that are needed. We're also, I um, think one of the most important things that's often forgotten is the tracking uh, in Mautic. For example, they were building campaigns, but there were no UTM tagging in those campaigns and all of those things were uh, being forgotten. Um, that's uh, yeah the main reason why we started creating uh, our campaign. Um, I want to start off by saying uh, this campaign, uh, this uh, marketing automation strategy framework is in no way a golden ticket to the perfect um, yeah, marketing automation strategy. Uh, I think that's important because marketing automation isn't a once and done job. It's something you need to um, yeah, work on intensively and take into account. You need to optimize your campaigns constantly. So it's uh, not the golden ticket, but it can be used as a, yeah, the framework can be used as a base to build your campaigns off. So the why, what are the benefits um, for using a um, framework concerning your marketing automation strategy? First of all, it creates uh, efficient workshops. When you um, go into a workshop with clients or with your team internally, um, you create a structured way of working and uh, efficient workshop. You get a validated prototype because um, the um, framework also works like a checklist, so you don't forget important assets and um, you have the complete campaign. Um, and you have a clear issue and a goal. And I think this is one of the most important parts because without a goal, you cannot score and we need a clear problem um, to work out on to make a good strategy. And because everything is um, efficient and it's built into workshops, it's also um, time reducing. Another important part with this is um, I guess it's important when using marketing automation to think agile. Um, what we've seen in the past is that a lot of uh, people who started using marketing automation wanted to set up everything all at once, uh, like 10 automation flows um, with 20 different emails, and that doesn't work out for them most of the time. 
Um, what we recommend is that you start off with one or two campaigns. You look at the data before you start building it. You, start, uh, you create your strategy and plan, you build it, and you grow it from there on. And you keep repeating that cycle till um, those two campaigns are yeah, optimized and um, have good conversion rates and everything else. And then you can start building um, something new because I think it's most important part to have a few qualified, uh, a few campaigns that are of really high quality than 10 campaigns that don't really work out. Uh, and it's also good to avoid repeat repetitive mails and everything surrounding that. But um, without further ado, let's dive into it. I'm gonna change my screen. And here we are. Um, this is the framework that we've created. So our marketing automation strategy framework. Uh, the framework can be separated in two parts. Uh, first of all, the strategy part. So everything you need to define your strategy and the building blocks part. So everything that's needed to build in a, the campaign in Matic or any other marketing automation platform. Um, in this framework, we always start out of the problem. So we start by defining the problem that you are facing. So um, what is the core problem? Why do you need marketing automation? Can it be automated? This can, for example, be there aren't enough leads or there is no automated sales follow-up or no clear flow for different events. So defining that problem is um, the first step here and it's a really important step. Once your problem is defined, we will go over to our goals and we will um, start defining our goal in a smart way. Um, so we can, once the framework is done and, and the campaign is live, we can go back and check if our goal is completed or not. Uh, once our goal is defined, we will have a look at the different customer personas that we need. Because um, when using marketing automation, then you have, for example, different client types, uh, people in marketing, people in, in IT, applicant, applicants, and they all need a different way of communication. So it's really uh, an important exercise to um, shed light on what are the different uh, clients that we have, um, what are the typical characteristics of your visitors or, or customers, um, how is their behavior, what are their pains, what are the gains, and what are the main frustrations um, of those customers. That's also important to change your uh, communication style or the information that you're sharing with those different customers. Once we've um, created our personas and we know um, who we are talking to and who our clients are, we start with uh, the customer journey mapping. So we will look at the why, the how, and the what of the conversion funnel. Um, we will cover the awareness phase, acquisition phase, activation, retention, revenue, and referral. And then this um, stage is really important to um, yeah, map out every digital touch point there is, um, every way a client can come into your funnel, and how um, he will convert at the end. Once those four are completed, we have a brief uh, summary of how our strategy will look like, and it's time to start working on the different building blocks that we have. Uh, the first building block is uh, the data. So how is the data stream processed? Is there a connection needed with the CRM, for example, of, or um, where is the data coming from? Um, do we need a connection with analytics, Google Data Studio, just to have a clear overview and that we can track um, everything afterwards and optimize it uh, based on data. Uh, next up are our different channels. So which channels are being used? Of course, it will be Mautic in this case, but um, we'll also have different connections, for example, with social media, um, Google, Google Ads, and all these things need to put, be put in place. Once uh, our channels are uh, yeah, known to us, we will have a look at our assets and not only assets as like uh, white papers or PDF, but um, assets in the more broad way, um, like also the emails that you need, the social posts, for example, that you need, the content that you need, and everything uh, surrounding that. Uh, and when our efforts assets are defined, we will have a look at the reporting. Um, this is also an important part uh, linked with the data part. So um, what are the different KPIs that we have and how can they be tracked? Do we need to do some conversion tracking? Do we need to implement tracking on our different assets? Um, and so on, so we can make everything data driven. Uh, and in the final part and the part that needs to be um, yeah, replayed over and over again is um, when we are going to optimize the campaign. So we're going to evaluate our different flows, evaluate our goals, if they are completed or not, and adapt uh, where necessary. And also have a look if we can personalize some more and create uh, yeah, a more qualitative 
um, flow for our clients. And another important part is we will have a look at which data can be reused for other campaigns. For example, when you have a webinar campaign about uh, uh, the subject, it can be interesting to make a custom segment of it to be used uh, later on when you have another webinar um, around that subject. Uh, around that subject or for example to create a uh, facebook custom audiences and connect your data so it's um, updated all the time so this is the technical side of um, the framework that we've created um we've been using this with different clients of ours and uh, i'll show you one of the workshops that we've used it in and um, let me just go down So in the workshop, uh, we'll going through the framework. So the first step, as in the framework, is the problem, defining the problem that you are facing. In this case, um, the workshop with was, was with um, four people, I guess, and they all could place some post-its down. Okay, what is the problem that we're facing? Some people uh, said there was no knowledge of visitors. Some people um, get, uh, found that uh, converting anonymous visitors to no visitors was very hard. Activating prospect was hard, and when every day everyone placed their um, yeah their post it, um, we went on to dot voting to um, decide what was the most necessary um, problem that we need to face. And that problem here was this was no clear webinar flow. Um, for example, um, this client just had webinars, and uh, you can subscribe to them. You get the link to invite it, but that's the only thing that happens with it. There is no data that's being reused. There is no follow up, and there is no uh, other chance to get in contact with the client afterwards. So once this problem was defined, we go on to create our goal. And our goal here is to create a reusable webinar flow which activates attendees with a month and activates as in um, after the webinar itself. We want to activate the client. Once our goal is clear, we go over to the customer persona. Um, I've placed an example here, but um, we, yeah, to decide on which the personas are of a client, we use uh, another workshop. Uh, this is a free template on Miro, if you want to use it, where we looked at the different um, uh, characteristics of a person, and we start dot voting again on what's the most important, and we end up with, um, yeah, like, an briefly high level um, overview of what's important to uh, a type of persona, what are their biggest frustrations, what is their knowledge, and uh, why? what's the reason they buy your products and extra inf information, for example, demographic information. That's interesting for this. Uh, and this is one of the most important parts um, of the framework, I guess, to really know how uh, who your customers are. So, um, we know our personas and now we'll go on to the fourth step and that's uh, the customer journey mapping. In this case, uh, so the client has a webinar, it's being promoted through um, referral from um, different partners in the same industry and um, through Google, um, one-sided SEO and um, search engine advertising, also through social and um, through email. So all those people, um, enter the funnel in the awareness phase and go on to the acquisition phase when, where they um, go on to our website and find the form to fill in to attend our webinar. Once this is, um, uh, once they subscribe to, I mean, once they filled in our form, we go over to the activation phase. So once the form is completed, it's a Mautic form in this case, uh, we know the client is uh, in our campaign and we can start sending emails at the client. So they go onto a thank you page, which we can track in analytics, and um, they get in a specific automated email flow. So the first email is a normal email, just a confirmation you've subscribed successfully. Um, after a couple of weeks, for example, or a couple of days before the webinar, uh, they will get the official invite email with their um, personalized, in personalized invite link. And uh, one hour or two hours before the event, they will get their reminder email. Um, this is all happening before and during the webinar. Once the uh, webinar is finished, we are going to the retention phase and um, send an email to the client for thank you for attending or in case you missed it um, so the client um, is contacted then again um, and in the final step um, we create a flow where uh, once the last email is sent an email is sent to the account manager of the client and they can have a call with the client to look at um, yeah if there are any possibilities 
Uh, this flow is uh, the basic flow. I will show the more advanced version of it in a bit. So once our funnel is uh, completed and our customer journey is mapped, uh, we will have a look at the data stream that we need in this case. So um, everyone is coming from different parts, from social, from um, Google, or from uh, our emails. So we need um, the analytics from social media. Uh, we need to, yeah. We need to, the data from social media needs to go to our analytics. The data from our CRM, for example, needs to go to Mautic. And every all the data needs to come together at the end in a data studio sheet. Um, because yeah, that's how the clients um, like it. They get an overview per um, campaign in uh, data studio. So yeah, it's easily readable for them. Once our data mapping is clear, we will make a list of the different channels that are being used so we don't forget anything. Um, so in this case, it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, the website, Mautic, and the webinar platform that they're using. And um, in the seventh step, we will go and have a look at which assets are being used here. So for example, we will need uh, different social posts for LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram to promote the webinar. We will need an email invitation, an email confirmation, an email reminder, and thank you email. And in case you missed it, email a form and different ads in this campaign. So just a clear list that you don't forget anything and the campaign, yeah, you're where you need to be and you have everything ready once launching the campaign. And uh, lastly, the reporting step. So what are the KPIs and how it can be tracked? Um, we need to make tracking of the mails, the form, an attendee report through the tool and analytics traffic report uh, of the different ways people have entered our website and how many people are converted. Once this is created, um, we create a different uh, a flow for the different clients. Uh, the original flow is the blue flow, so um, uh, or all the blue blocks, I mean. So um, clients um, get in via the different social channels, they get into Mautic, they are sent the different uh, confirmation email, they get an invite, a reminder, thank you email, and they are sent to sales. We let this campaign run for like two weeks, and take, I think, and then we started optimizing it. Uh, we took, took a look at the different um, flows and evaluated them. So one of the first ideas that we had here was to start a B test, a B testing, sorry, the email. Um, for example, right now it was uh, sent out of a generic email. So just for example, company at gmail.com. But um, we started sending out the emails uh, using dynamic content. Um, via the account manager or a certain specialist that's being used. This is because clients like to feel um, yeah, important and they like to have personalized um, contact. And if they get the email from somebody they're familiar with, they're most more likely to open it. Um, we've also added an extra um, opt-in uh, on the form. So um, clients will be um, added to a segment with relevant information about the webinar. For example, if it's a webinar at Drupal, they will be placed in a Drupal trip campaign um, where they get extra information. And um, lastly, another step that was added um, is the in case you missed it step. Because we are using a personal personalized link in the invites, uh, we can see who clicked on that link and who didn't click on the link. So um, when someone didn't click on the link, we can uh, we know he didn't attend the webinar and so we will send in in case you missed it um, so that they um, can watch the recording afterwards and lastly it will send the user to sales um, once this is all completed we start to fill this in in the framework and the framework is afterwards just used as a uh, checklist and can be used again to build um, new campaigns and yeah, to really start uh, building qualitative campaigns. Um, so yeah, this was um, all about the framework. I'm going back to my presentation now. Um, but I want to, yeah, it's really important that you know that this isn't the golden ticket. You need to um, optimize your campaigns truly and truly again. Um, so you create the best um, yeah, marketing automation strategy framework. But as I said, it's a good um, base to start out of. And, 
this was uh, my presentation about the framework. I want to thank um, all of you for attending. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if you have any questions or you want to discuss some things about the framework. And you can download uh, the framework here using this link, but I'll place it in the chat um, afterwards. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> that, that was really, really great, too. Um, Thank you. I was, just, I was just wowed at how much information you've just been able to share um, with that framework. And um, it's really, really, really cool stuff. And mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be helpful for everybody, including myself, that is listening to this and whoever will be coming across to it later. All right. So, okay, I was about asking how can someone access the framework, but since you already gave a link, to download. So is this, is this a P, PDF version? Yeah, it's a PDF version, indeed. OK, so it means I have to go create my own Miro about myself. But I will <laughs> we'll, uh, make it into a Miro um, framework afterwards, and I'll share it in the community so everyone can start using it in a workshop if they would like to. That That's perfect. That really makes a lot of sense. <laughs> All right, great, great, great. OK, so I'm going to download this just after this presentation. But before then, mm -hmm. let's just go to question and answer. So um, let's first, let me ask you, um, this framework that you just shared with us, so is it only an experienced marketer or an experienced automation marketing person that can use this? Or is it something that is easily used mm -hmm. and easy to use for everybody? I think it's um, yeah, it's made for everybody. Um, maybe people who don't have an experience with marketing automation do need some uh, guidance um, filling it in and doing the workshop. But um, once you get the hang of it and you st uh, start to know how everything works surrounding it, I think everyone um, can use it. All right, great, great, good. So um, let's go on for another question. So you did talk about agile. So mm -hmm. uh, it's also very important from you, from everything you've shared so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's one of the most common mistakes uh, in marketing automation that people want to rush it. And once they bought their platform or um, took a subscription on something, they want to automate everything all at once. And that causes a lot of, yeah double emails that are being sent and just not the real uh, the strategies aren't that uh, thought through so i think um once you start setting up so um two flows step by step and you start um analyzing them and optimizing them every time the value of your flows will be uh, much more yeah valuable <laughs> and uh, it would be much better i guess okay all right good all right so one more question to, mm -hmm. so that um what has been your most important takeaway using Motic? Um, I think the thing I liked most about Motic is that you can create everything uh, data driven. You can do everything based on uh, how somebody interacts with your emails and how if someone doesn't interact, you can um, jump in on it. So I think that's the most important part for me. All right, perfect, perfect. All right, so at this point, I have no more questions. Um, anybody who else who have questions, they can connect with you on LinkedIn. I'm going to send yeah. you a request on LinkedIn too. I don't think we are connected. I think we are already oh, connected yeah. to, from uh, the last article. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah. All right. Maybe I'll see an eye. Okay. All right. So um, that's really good. I, I I really learned a lot during this presentation. And in, I would say it's one of the best I've, I've been part of during this um conference because Thank that framework you shared and um, being able to explain everything step by step with the example really makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. But before you go, is there any other thing you want to talk about or something you want to share? Uh, at this moment, uh, I can't think of anything, sorry. All right, no problem. That's fine. Thanks so much for your time. This, Thank um, you. I don't know what time you are now, but it's evening, yeah? Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for your time. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Enjoy the conference. And Bye. enjoy it. Bye. Enjoy the other parts of Modicom. And you too. All right. So don't forget the um, the mirror bot. So when he's ready, you can just share mm -hmm. the comment. Yeah, I'll uh, make my work of it. All right. Great. Bye bye. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for that. That was an interesting session with Turin, and it was really, really inspiring to be able to see a framework that can help digital marketers to be able to understand how they can use um, um, 
Motic and be able to create the um, a canvas and use it to easily simplify whatever they are doing. All right, so we still have more sessions that will be running after this. Don't for, don't forget to don't miss out of the um, keynote from Roots, which will be coming shortly soon. So please be part of that keynote. There are a lot of things you need to learn about the community, what's happening, and then don't forget to interact, network. We also have the fun section, the fun area of the, of, the, of the conferencing platform where you can be able to take pictures, you can share on social media. And if you are trying to, if you are trying to, um, to share presentation screenshots, please remember to use the hashtag multicontract21. So it's been really good experience um, having everybody around so far. Um, this meeting, thank you once again and bye for now.